you get back up. That's the dumbest question you can ask. What? It's your time to show up and show out. Rise to the challenge to exceed expectations. Time is not just ticking. The time to make it happen is now. I got three words for you. You like that? Yeah! Today's QB Continued series takes a closer look at Dak Prescott, who received an exclusive franchise tag this offseason from the Cowboys. Dallas has until July 15th to work out a long-term deal with Dak, who's currently slated for a deal worth between $30 million and $33 million this season. On that note, we bring in Super Bowl champ, our guy, Damian Woody. Damian, always good to see you, but I am going to Max Kellerman here. Max, is Dak closer to being undervalued or overvalued? Overvalued if I have to pick. I think he's actually valued pretty accurately, but if I have to go between over and under, I'll take over. I think that that's because we could all recognize from preseason of his first season, of his rookie year, whoa, this guy's got something. He's a natural leader, you know. Uh, and, and then you can see him also have all the tools to make plays, even if he sometimes leaves bigger plays on the field. Um, and you can see his trajectory is going in the right direction. So we look at him as though he's already there, but he's not. He's not yet like a top five quarterback. But he's about to be paid like one in his next deal, you know, because if he gets franchised and doesn't hold out and then does a long-term deal, he's likely to be, you know, for at least for a little while, the highest paid quarterback in football, but he's not the best. And I realize that's the way it works. Uh, it worked that way for Carson Wentz. It worked that way for Jared Goff. Dak fans who say, well, why shouldn't it work that way for Dak? You're right. It should. He's in that group somewhere. Um, but my point is the Eagles are struggling because they paid Wentz. The Rams are struggling because they paid Goff. The Cowboys want to struggle. They should pay Dak like one of those guys. So I think the general feeling is he's an, already an elite quarterback when, in fact, what's to be excited about in terms of Dak is that he looks like he's on his way to being there. There's no guarantee that he gets there. Um, before I go into my little soliloquy, yo, Damian Woody, what's up, man? You don't know how to say hello? I mean, you just said hello to Molly. You ain't say hello to your boy? I mean, what's up with that? What's up? Listen, let me tell you something, okay? Say good First morning, all, Molly, man. Molly, Molly, Molly ain't say good morning. to even say anything. She went into, you know, went into the topic. But what I'm not going to have is you jumping out of my grill first thing this morning. I'm just saying. I'm not going to have that. You, you, you know say I mean? good morning you got, when you come on this show you nice and you speak properly and respectfully. That's what you do. To, you're not going to be trying to get on me, bro. Now, I'm just telling you, next time you come on this show, you say hello and good morning first before Listen, you speak. And I would like to defend us, myself. Not just Molly. What's beef? We're dealing beef with unusual circumstances here, all being in different yes. studios. So I was just trying to get right to the topic to make it smooth. I would never be rude to you, Damian. I, I heard him say hello to you, He's trying to look all serious. He's trying to look all serious, talking all loud like that's supposed to intimidate me. Yeah, yeah you, you need to be intimidated. I'm just going to let you know. But let me get to my point about <laughs> Dak Prescott. Let me tell you something right now, right? Listen, Dak Prescott is being undervalued for one reason and one reason only. It's not a long-term deal. It's not even about the money to me. All right, 31, 33, 35. The reason I have a problem with the Cowboys is because I personally believe that if this were Tony Romo under the same circumstances, he'd have had a deal, period. Four years, not missed a single game, back news, uh, paid back page story when the man missed a practice and we got to take into account what we're asking of quarterbacks in the modern era. It's not just about you flinging the football. It's also about the fact that you are a leader. You're accountable. You're reliable and you are an extension of ownership. And we all know what Dak Prescott has meant to the Dallas Cowboys over the last few years, not just on the field, but off the field in regards to Kaepernick, in regards to Ezekiel Elliott, because he didn't create problems that Ezekiel Elliott uh, uh, presented to you. There's a whole bunch of stuff that comes into it, not to mention the fact that you just acknowledged, Max, the trajectory is going upwards. He's only 26 years of age. You see all of that. If this were Tony Romo, Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones, my buddy, still my buddy. But if it was Tony Romo, they'd have had a deal done. 
That's my issue with the Dallas Cowboys in terms of franchise tagging them. I don't give a damn how much money you pay him. As long as you're committed to just one year, you are, you are messing him over. He deserves a long-term deal, and I'm not going to be satisfied until I see him get it. Well, listen, Stephen, I agree that Dak deserves a long-term deal. Um, everything that the Cowboys have asked of Dak Prescott, he's done. I think, but I'm going to take the over simply because when you look at Dak Prescott, he comes in fourth round draft pick. The Dallas Cowboys have done everything imaginable, okay, to help to help Dak Prescott in his development. Okay, they've added offensive line. They got the running back. They traded for a number one wide receiver in Amari Cooper. And this past year, he had his best statistical year in his whole career. But the problem is, Stephen A., he only won one game against a winning opponent. One game. Okay, to me, when I look at quarterbacks, if I'm paying a quarterback the type of money that we're talking about, the Russell Wilson type money, because I believe that's the type of money he's asking for and he should be asking for because he's trying to reset the market. When are you going to see him elevate the team? And I think that's what the, the Cowboys has some reservation about giving him a long-term deal because they don't view him in that manner as a Russell Wilson or, well, you know, quarterbacks of that caliber. When I see Dak Prescott really elevate the Dallas Cowboys, put them on their, on their show, on right. his shoulders, then I think, to me, that's why I think it's my, over right now. Now, Stephen A., let me say one, one other thing. One, oh, one, let ahead, me say one other thing. I think another thing that's that's uh, that's baked into this is coaching as well. I want to see Dak Prescott with Mike McCarthy because I think we all can agree that Mike McCarthy well, is a better coach than Jason Garrett. So I want to see what he looks like which is, which, with, with a, a Super Bowl winning head coach. But, but that's where the hole in your argument comes from, Damian, because you never mentioned that pre uh, previously. You said that they gave him everything. They didn't give him everything. They gave him a coach that was subpar at best, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and not only that, you gave him a rookie offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore. So I'm saying to you, you didn't give him everything that he needed. A matter of fact, the most important thing, people who are calling the plays and people who are his bosses, you didn't have the right people in place for him. You might that's have it now in McCarthy, but you didn't have that. That's why the franchise tag, Stephen A. That's why. The Cowboys get... Damien, you're 100% right. How much more do you need? And you can't make the playoffs in the worst division ever? Right? With an Eagles team that was struggling? Because they were terrible. Carson Wentz looked good-ish against the worst teams in the world toward the end of the season. You can't make the playoffs under those circumstances? Like, that's the truth. So what was it this year? Jerry Jones waited a year too long to see if it was coach or quarterback. He could see the coach is the problem. Get the coach out of there. Get a, at least a competent coach. Whatever you want to think about McCarthy, he's a solid coach with an excellent resume once upon a time, right? So now it's not the coaching issue anymore. They're, they're for the franchise tag, Stephen A. Okay, Dak, now you have every last thing. Are you the guy that we hope you can be and that you're saying you are? Yes or no. So here's a franchise tag. And if you are those things, they're going to wind up paying them, making them the highest paid quarterback in the world. They're going to give them the biggest guarantee, the highest salary per annum, but they don't believe they need to yet because they still don't know. And you know what? They're right about that. Does anybody have right. a problem with the fact that they knew with Tony Romo? I mean, is it just me? I love Tony Romo as, a, as an analyst, as a broadcaster. I think he's sensational. Uh, and he was damn talented as a quarterback. Please don't get me wrong. But I can't understand why every channel that I turn to, including our very own, a multitude of channels that we have, we consistently hear people talk about Dak Prescott this way when Tony Romo was there. And not only was he the same, if not worse, but on top of it all, he, no. went, listen, he wasn't as durable. And we well, know Romo that Jerry Jones no, no, would have paid him. Better than How come nobody brings that up? Maybe, but... Maybe, but even if I think that Dak can eventually be a greater quarterback than Romo, and I think that's possible, uh, I like his chances. Romo at his best was better than Dak at his best, period. The best version of Romo hit a higher height, maintained it for longer I'm not, than I'm not Dak denying so far. that. So, like... I'm not denying that. I'm just saying... I'm not right. denying that. I'm just saying there were too many occasions where we saw Tony, less than Tony Romo's best. 
We saw well, less gonna, than his I, best on too many occasions. Fair. And sometimes he was catastrophic. Well, I'll say this. I think that Dak Prescott has a better collection of talent than Tony Romo had when he was playing. And you could clearly see during Tony Romo's career, there were many times where he elevated his team. Now, the ending might not always be great as far as the playoffs is, is concerned, but I think there's no question to me that Tony Romo was a better all-around quarterback than Dak Prescott is right now. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that, but he still made mistakes. They still didn't win. They weren't making playoffs. I mean, you had back-to-back-to-back to back to back eight and eight seasons where they lost on the last game of the regular season to each team in the NFC East, and still he was so getting Stephen his money. A, Stephen A. But you know what? But you, but you know what, as Stephen As loaded as the Cowboys now, now, were. We're, we're, talking as, about, we're talking about a bigger structural issue with the Dallas Cowboys as an organization. I'm just, we're just comparing. Okay. We're just talking about Romo talking and, and Dak. We're just talking about quarter, quarterback to quarterback. And also, right, okay. before, oh, well, you pay with guys, before you pay them, before you pay them, before you pay them, look at the Eagles. So I, I'm very high on Wentz, not low like everyone thinks. It's just I hold him to a high standard that he hasn't lived up to last couple of years. The fact of the matter is if you pay a guy like a top five quarterback, but he doesn't perform that way, it kills you. Donovan McNabb took him to the NFC Championship game with less all the time. You want to hamstring yourself like the Eagles and the Rams? Pay Dak like, like the Eagles and the Rams paid their guys. Okay, well, they haven't yet. He's got that exclusive tag, that and uh, Tony Romo got deals. taken care of with his long-term TV deal. Dak is still waiting to get his. Tomorrow, we will pick this back up, our QB continued series, but we'll focus on the MVP, Lamar Jackson. He has a disappointing trip to the playoffs this past season. How will he respond this season? We'll focus on Lamar on first take. Thursday, another quarterback we need to get to. Cam is out. Where should he end up playing next season? The best fit, Damian Woody. We'll be back for that.